Okay, a quick rubber stamp show and tell featuring the Rubber Stampers World Magazine for the rubber stamping or for the rubber stamp artist. This is volume three, issue five from February, March 1996. I'm not quite sure what that's referring to. I don't know if volume three means like year three, issue five. I'm not really sure. I don't know too much about this magazine. But I'm pretty sure that this magazine was put out, yes, by Wildlife Enterprises, okay? They had a lot of wildlife and things like that. And it looks like they had, you know, uh, some scenic stamping elements as well. But this is their magazine, and um, it wasn't a real uh, kind of super widespread magazine, but I really loved this type of um kind of smaller production, you know, there's just a lot of care that went into it, and I just look at this magazine cover right here, this, it was probably photocopied or something like that, and then it's, I, I don't know how they got this on there, it's almost like screen printing or something like that, and embossed in terms of these, uh, this little color separation right here, but just to do something like that, I mean, you have to register all this together and print it, I don't know if they were sending this out to have it printed, probably not, you know, in terms of kind of this scale, in terms of the distribution, but I don't know, who knows? I mean, this type of magazine, though, it was really just, you know, you, you can sense the care and uh, just the passion for uh, the medium uh, of rubber stamps in general that went into this type of thing like this. So this one, Vamp Stamp News, National Stamper Graphic, um, kind of, you know, smaller run types of uh, rubber stamping publications at the time. But these types of things like this, before kind of the bigger um, publishers, Rubber Stamp Madness was, you know, a rural rubber stamp specific uh, publisher. But then you got these um, larger uh, publishers, you know, that would have um, uh, a title or something like that. And that's what you started to see come out kind of later on uh, in the industry. Um, uh, what is it, uh, Stamping, Stampington and Company, they were their own publisher too, but um, a lot of the stuff is, you know, this type of thing, it was like publisher to uh, end user, you might have had some stores carrying um, these types of magazines as well, um, but, uh, you know, I don't know, I'm not really sure. Okay, Arizona Stamps too, a uniquely artistic rubber stamp company. This company right here, this is just the ad on the opening page right here, um, a lot of uh, scenic stamping uh, enthusiasts really loved this company and they were out of uh, Phoenix, Arizona. Um, and this was one of those companies that was like here and gone the next month. Um, I have no idea what happened to them. If you know anything about Arizona stamps uh, too, uh, drop me a note in the comment section or do you have any of their stamps? Um, now this magazine right here, there's a lot of um, kind of instructional things and uh, informational things. I just did kind of a quick well, flip through just to make sure that I, I didn't already do a video on this one. If I did, I apologize about that. Um, but I just don't remember everything that I've done um, in terms of these videos before and uh, things like the uh, um, show and tells. But look at this right here. This is a color copy. It's like a color laser copy that they've left this page open here. Um, and hand glued in this, you know, to have a color... Um, sample in there and uh, you know what what time and devotion you know for um, you know a publication like this you know that someone's put into it variations on a theme uh, these hearts right here in different card formats bejeweling you know this is before the internet was out there I mean the internet was around in 1996 but there was very little information if you looked up rubber stamps um, stampscapes you know, the Stampscapes website would come up on the first page on things like a web crawler or, I don't know, what were some of those other, maybe Yahoo was around at the time or something like that. Stampscapes, the Stampscapes website was one of the first ones out there. I didn't have the domain, but uh, this friend of mine that was uh, going to college at the time to get his law degree, he was doing that to kind of just, you know, I don't know, bypass some, you know, free time and to kind of blow off some steam and he wanted to learn HTML, so he created a website for Stampscapes, and it was just things like a few samples and uh, the catalog that he had scanned. Paper Post, that was a store by uh, Sinan Douglas in uh, 
Thousand Oaks, California. She did a lot of the, uh, or I don't know, maybe all or a lot of the uh, the hand carved eraser types of uh, designs for a stamp. The hand company, Visual Image Printery. Maybe you know that company or remember them from around this time. Probably in two, maybe two thousand or something like that. I don't, I don't recall exactly, but um, they had a really large booth at um, the different shows. But um, you know, just a really great. Uh, company and uh i don't know i really missed uh seeing some of these companies at the various different shows i was flipping through this earlier and i saw this stamp camp put on by limited edition rubber stamp company um and paper rubber stamp and paper company lee edwards um owned uh limited edition rubber stamps and uh, she took a class from me one time and i don't know we were kind of friends and whatnot but she invited me to be a, uh, an instructor at the um, stamp camp which is basically a, like a three-day weekend retreat in the Napa area. And that was a, just a really fun weekend. I really liked doing um, uh, retreats like that, going out to some place and, uh, you know, just teaching, you know, your classes in one location and everyone staying there at the same location and, you know, eating breakfast, lunch, and dinner together. And it was just a really fun time and uh, just a really fun event. I... I Retreats, I always loved teaching classes, but um, it was always the logistics of doing that type of thing and traveling from store to store sometimes. You know, if I'm not teaching in one store over the entire weekend, um, uh, it would be just traveling, you know, from one store and driving a couple hundred miles to the next store and teaching like the next day, you know, three classes or whatnot. So that part of it became a little exhausting at times, but... Um, you know, the retreat's really fun. And just the fact that you're staying in one place. It was a real kind of a fun type of event if you've ever done anything like that before. I'd really recommend it. If we ever start doing that type of, you know, social gathering again. So, um, you know, this type of magazine had all these little different types of techniques like that. You know, it wasn't, you know, a time of the Internet where you'd have a lot of different, you know, photographic examples online you know we were all on dial up at the time so you know definitely no video or something like that so you know someone had to draw all these little diagrams and things like that to um, explain the different techniques out here you know I mean I used to have to do um, a lot of written instruction like this myself for stampscapes and you can see it on the website but kind of in explaining how to use, you know, like the tonal applicator stamp or something like that, I might have had like two pages, diagrams and something like that, but I can show someone, you know, in video form in like 10 seconds, and they'd have a much better idea of what I was talking about than uh, the written form. So, I don't know, there is something that, you know, that can be said that's been lost, you know, about kind of things like this in the early days and kind of the innocence at all of it all and kind of the educational methodology of learning how to do something. There was like a, a much greater investment that went into it. But, you know, that being said, you can learn a lot more and a lot faster on something like uh, YouTube these days. Stampfest Orlando. I went to one of these early conventions out there. I think I did it two years. I don't know if it was just one but i thought it was two i don't know if it was this 1996 one or not but um i don't know a lot of times when uh uh, uh manufacturers did shows something like you know the location did come into play in some areas so you know something like orlando you know people were, would think okay i don't know if i want to go oh there's a show in orlando yeah let's go there I, I always wanted to go to disney world or something like epcot or something like that and when i did that show i did go to epcot on uh, one of those trips no i did it twice okay so on one of those trips i did go and take an extra day and do you know like epcot and some, I, I think it was just epcot i don't think i did any of the other uh, um uh, amusement parks out there at the time, but I'd always wanted to see that Epcot uh, Center. The original stamp cruise, I mentioned, I was talking about a stamp cruise in a, a previous show and tell before, but on this one, this one's put on by Stamp a Doodle. They invited me to do one of these shows, but yeah, see, like something like this, you you were gone for seven days, among, you know, on an on Alaskan cruise, and I just could not take off like seven days. That's seven days on the cruise, so you had to go in, you know, the night before to you know, somewhere around the port of call, ports of call, and uh, 
you know, then when you're getting back, I don't know if you're, you know, you're getting back and you, I don't know what time at, you know, the day or night, and then you got to fly back or something like that. So I'd be just, I'd be gone for too many, too long, but, um, it says here that Dee Grunig was on this one, um, or she was going to be teaching there, and Suze Weinberg here. Um, but that, I don't know. I, those always sounded like a really fun type of event, so I don't know. I regret, you know, I regret not being able to do one of those things, but I just, you know, I, did, I didn't have time to do that type of thing. And uh, I don't know, you know, when you're running your own company and whatnot, uh, no matter what you're doing, you know, there's not a lot of time like that to uh, need to take off. Embossing procedures and techniques here. Um, I don't know, just early days of stamping. So a lot of people had been stamping by this time, okay, 1996. But this is around the time that those late 90s and the early 2000s are really were, you know, um, a lot more people started getting into the hobby. So you're, you know, we're talking about instructional types of things like this. Um, where it says, like, here's a tip here, don't use a hair dryer, you know, because it'll blow a breeze or whatever. And uh, it is talking about the heat guns here um, in terms of the usage of, uh, you know, embossing powders and uh, techniques and whatnot. But um, look at this little diagram right here in terms of embossing the light bulb, you know, <laughs> so you're probably using, like, a... I don't know if it'd work on a 60 uh, watt, but, you know... 100 watt bulb or something like that, and look at this side here, powder side up, right? So isn't that cool, you know, seeing something like it's such a kind of an innocent um, time in rubber stamping like that, and uh, just, you know, a lot of the beginner um, types of uh, uh, techniques, and so look at this, return powder to bottle, and it's like showing it pouring into the, you know, back into the bottle, so, you know, you had to, you know, say things like that, uh, you know, because, I don't know, maybe people don't know about that, you know, you know, so you're just giving them, you know, some of the real basic stuff right here, but, um, you know, uh, that's, you know, people who are reading these types of things, and, you know, really just getting to learn about um, the different techniques and uh, processes out there, so, I don't know, it's just fun to kind of look back and see some of these um, types of uh, uh, techniques and uh, things that they're talking about right here. But look at this one. This one's right here. I can tell. See, this one, it's like a, a hand-printed things within this text right here. So someone has done this copy, and, you know, there weren't, like, um, text uh, or uh, page layout programs at the time where you're scanning and putting these things in there. If you had something like that on a computer, it was a really probably a pretty powerful um, program or whatever, you know, but so this was something where probably someone did the typing and, you know, measured out all the spaces but here, but I could see right here, you know, they there was a piece of lint on that piece right there when they stamped that out, so this isn't hand stamped in here, they stamped it into a master and then had this, you know, like copied off or something like that, but there's a big chunk of lint right there, and, you know, so you get the little dot with the, you know, nothing around it, so... I don't know, see, seeing things like that to me, I mean, it's kind of the fun thing. I don't see this as like an air, but it's something more kind of charming about, you know, what, you know, it says about the production of this um, type of book right here. But, um, I don't know, just really fun stuff, and uh, I don't know. I thank the people who put publications like this together at the time. Oh, look at this one right here. Um, make irregular shapes. So this is a cloud template right here. I see this cloud template these days um, put up recently, and people are doing really amazing things with it. Um, and I forget what that cloud template is from, but it's like, you know, kind of the, uh, the most, you know, the most kind of uh, advanced thing or something like that. But I'm thinking they were doing these cloud templates, you know, a long time ago, but you just cut them out yourself. But now people are using this, like, plastic one. And, uh, you know, it's doing amazing work, but you can do these types of things yourself. And here's these cloud different types of uh, formations in these um, diagrams right here, okay? But here it is, you know, being talked about in this real early magazine when you didn't have kind of very many accessories out there at all. And you just cut it out yourself. And, of course, when you're doing it like this, you know, you can... Cut it out, cut out many different shapes or whatever type of ones you want and whatever type of cloud you want. You know, you want it 
cumulus clouds, you know, stratus clouds, alto cumulus, I don't know, it goes on and on. But what is this one here? The layered uh, technique card, you know, where it's uh, multi-dimensional. And uh, look at that. That's where that little cutout is right down there with all that ink around it and whatnot. But it's doing that kind of reverse uh, type of uh, imagery on there. But look at this right here. Paper tab at the bottom of the uh, feet, you know, so you know how to glue it on and whatnot. Foam core. I don't know. Isn't this fun stuff? And it's fun for me looking back at that, you know. I mean, rubber stamping has really gone a long way, but a lot of these techniques are still being utilized, right? It's still, you know, I don't know. When you talk about card making, it's not like it's, you know, it's gone co totally, like, digital or something like that. You can certainly utilize those types of uh, different things and whatnot, but um, I don't know. There's a certain innocence to it, but then, you know, you see certain, you know, these types of techniques that still... Um, you know, come into play these days. Hippo Heart here, I taught at that uh, store before, that was in San Mateo. I always liked going to that uh, Bay Area to teach classes and, you know, do the uh, Rubberama convention there in San Jose. It was always a lot of fun. Um, let's see, graphic marker. Now see, I've talked about this graphic marker here. Um, graphic marker, I thought it was called Graphic Marker USA, but these are the Studio 2 pens right here. These are the dual-pointed alcohol-based permanent markers, okay? This was way before Copic markers um, kind of became popular. Copic markers might have been around at the time, but in 1996, you didn't see too much of this stuff. Now, I bought my um, set of uh, Copic markers probably around 1989 or 90 or so, something like that. I used them for... Um, my college years and doing some comps, you know, they call them comprehensives, your um, kind of layouts and whatnot, where you can kind of play around with colors and things like that, and then you go into your final and do it in a uh, painted format, but um, the Studio 2 pens were really fantastic pens at the time, and they offered their pens in various values, like from 10%, 20%, 30%, whatever, in whatever hue you wanted, and you can buy a whole collection of them in whatever percentage you wanted. But I, it was a real kind of, um, uh, I don't know, it was, I don't know, cottage type of industry. I, I think they were, they were doing all their mixing of their own uh, chemistry and, and whatnot, I think on their own, like, like right here in the uh, factory, and that was in Chatsworth. But um, I don't know, some really great pens here. Here's con some conventions and different rubber stamping dates. I just did a quick flip through of this magazine before, and I was thinking, okay, this is just it right here in 1996 but then I flipped this and I thought oh my gosh you know there were a lot of conventions going on at the time the heirloom productions um, entity had uh, you know several different conventions around the country there was the Akron uh, convention right here Ohio that was one that we always did but we used to do a lot of these different shows in here not all of them but look at this one right here is this, this one's in the UK and, at the uh, Stamp in Birmingham, at the University of Birmingham, England. Isn't that something? And uh, Tisha Moore here with Alternative Art Fest. She put on some really fantastic shows that were super well attended. They would only go on for like one or two years, though, or something like that. And she had several different companies and well, and all kinds of entities. Super creative and uh, just always were super well attended, too. And uh, I don't know, just, they had a different energy to them, you know, like uh, real kind of art, artisan types of shows and whatnot and companies and uh, kind of curated collections of designs and whatnot here. But uh, Puyallup show, we used to do that one, that first Puyallup show right here in Washington. I think that was one of the first conventions up there, unless, uh, unless uh, Tisha Moore put on one before that, but... Um, we did this show back in, it might have been the 1996 one, I'm not quite sure, unless it was earlier than that, like a year before or something like that, but my gosh, we took a bunch of stamps up to that one. And it's a two-day show, and I think we sold out of every stamp, like 80% of them, I don't know, maybe not that much, but 70% of everything by noon on the first day, so it was like the first three other, you know, three hours, and we were just cleaned out. It was um, insane. 
But uh, Boston, East Coast Rubber Stamps Arts and Crafts Festival. This is in Boston, Massachusetts, but if that, that's got to be the same one. And that switched to Springfield, West Springfield, Massachusetts. And uh, we used to go to the Basketball um, Hall of Fame after setting up the show on Fridays. It was so much fun. Uh, this is interesting right here. Here's a convention in Scottsdale, uh, Arizona, right? And then here's another one in Scottsdale. Two different entities, though, okay? And back then, this, this was, you know, pre, um, like, scrapbook shows and stuff like that, too. So that's, it's not like this one was a scrapbook show and this one was a stamping show. So these are both stamp shows. June 15th and 16th, 1996. June 29th, 1996. And both in Scottsdale, you know, so I don't know. That's kind of weird having uh, that type of uh, coordination by these two different entities, um, you know, in the same city. So, like, rubber stamp stores in the Scottsdale, Arizona, you know, they're not going to enjoy, you know, like that about the, you know, that uh, type of uh, thing going on. Or, you know, neither would uh, the coordinators. For that. So, I mean, they might might not have known about it. Maybe these were the uh, the first shows ever put on. They're not necessarily saying, hey, is anyone going to put on our shows? So, I don't know. And it, they weren't held in the same location, I don't think, either. Here's another uh, UK show in 1996 here. Commonwealth Exhibition Center, London, England. Here's one in Germany right here. Germany um, was one of the first um, conventions, I think, in all of Europe. Um, it was by Hein Design. Okay. They asked me to go and if I wanted to go do a show there one time. And uh, again, it goes back to that thing about travel. I just could not take off, you know, for several days and whatnot. You know, I had to stay home, you know, get the orders out and make stamps and whatnot. But um, stamps, you know, there was a lot of conventions that were going on. Um, some of them independently um, put on, and some of them were more of an entity, a convention entity like um, Heirloom. Well, maybe they were the only ones. Most of these other ones were just uh, like two or three shows or something like that, you know the original rubber stamp convention that was um kathy from a stamp in the hand that did that one but um yeah the dallas rubber stamp expo i don't remember this one but um heirloom started putting on a show in uh that uh dallas fort worth area like that too but um i don't know i i'm just kind of surprised at seeing this especially in 1996 i would have thought more 98, 99, or something like that, but as early as 96, you started to see, um, kind of, a, you know, the, uh, the medium really gaining some speed and some, uh, I don't know, some momentum in terms of, uh, it being a medium and a hobby that a lot more people were getting into. So anyways, that's this magazine right here. I don't really know too much about this magazine because um, I didn't have a subscription to it and whatnot, but uh, I don't know. If you had this magazine or know anything about it and whatnot, uh, put a comment down in the comment section or, you know, um, I don't know how, what years it went on from and to. Okay, I don't think I have like a vast range. I have a few... Um, kind of around this time period here and whatnot, but um, or if you know about any of these different um, uh, different uh, manufacturers or different uh, conventions that I mentioned, and if you attended any of them, I don't know. Put a comment down in the comment section and let us know. But um, I don't know. Just a really fun kind of uh, walk through, flip through of this magazine right here and seeing, um, I don't know, a lot of familiar, you know, types of uh, entities and uh, events that, uh, I don't know, for me, bring back a lot of good memories. So anyways, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And thanks for tuning into the channel.